Well, what's up everyone? My name is Mark Hawk and today we're doing a side-by-side -side with the Sony AZ-1 against the GoPro Hero 4 Black. Now we're going to put these cameras through a variety of tests so you can use any of these quick links to jump to the section you're most interested in or you can stay here and watch me be out of breath and we'll start playing all of them. So let's get out there. <laughs> So we're going to start at taking a look at the GoPro Hero Form Black at 4K, 30 frames per second, which is going to be 3840 by 2160. Now this is the max resolution we can get out of the camera at 30 frames per second. And with the Sony HDR AZ-1, that's going to be 1920 by 1080. Now each camera is filming with its default color grade with the Hero 4 Black that's going to be uh, with Pro Tunes enabled. We're going to have the GoPro color grade. If you don't have Pro Tunes enabled, this is basically the general color setting you would see without Pro Tune turned on. And with the Sony HDR, it chips with neutral, but I'm leaning more towards filming with Vivid 90% of the time with the Sony HDR series, so we'll just keep it on that for now. And if we zoom in here, uh, we're going to see that like the Hero 4 Black has a really good sense of adding these greens and saturating it, and it feels very natural, while the Sony HDR this time around feels a little warm. Like, if we're zooming in here, you can see the trees feel uh, a little bit red, and they're kind of muddy. Again, we're looking at the Hero 4 for looking for clarity. We can look at all the ridge lines, look nice and crisp. You can tell the individual uh, tree trunks in the sort of mesh of forest down there, and even the, the grass sort of in the foreground here is, is pretty nice and crisp on the Hero 4 Black. Now that's really one of the nice advantages of the Hero 4 Black filming at 4K is it's just very sharp. It's got a very high amount of image clarity throughout the entire shot. Everything from the faraway mountains to things up close. So let's take a look at Sony with its neutral color grade on. Now there's been, again, debate in the past that if I leave vivid color mode on, the scene will be much sharper, but as we just kind of saw, it really didn't make a huge difference being in vivid color mode uh, when it came to those mountain edges or kind of telling the difference between the tree trunks and the forest. And as we zoom in here, um, things are actually a little easier to pull out with the neutral color grade mode on. It's just because things aren't as crunched down. So all those black areas in the trees on the Sony side, there's more values in them, so if we want to color correct that ourselves later, this could be a way we can sort of add sharpness in, uh, in post-production. Now, if you're someone who doesn't really feel the need to film in 4K because you don't have a 4K television or you don't have a computer that can handle 4K, there's one thing that's really good about filming in 4K, and we kind of mentioned it before, is it's that sort of increased image clarity uh, throughout various depths of field, so everything up close and everything far away stays so super sharp. Now if we zoom in here on the 2.7K version of this, uh, things are much sharper still compared to the Sony's 1080p, but there's definitely um, a sort of muddiness and a, a lack of quality and, and crispness that we had filming at 4K. So yes, I don't have a 4K TV, but if I'm scaling that footage down to this 1080p frame that we're looking at here on YouTube, um, we're still retaining a lot of that information that would be lost if we were filmed at 2.7K. So here we have both cameras in their sort of flat color mode, and the big advantage of this for us is later on, if we ever want to color correct this footage later, we have more information to work with. And we're going to lose a lot of that information under the wheel, for example, when we start crunching those values by applying the default color grade that GoPro gives us. So if we ever want to lighten up the black values, if we start lightening up those black values, all of that detail that's under that sort of wheel area is gone. Um, this might seem like a little minor detail, but when you're doing color correction, like having control over these little areas is a big advantage. So as you can see, we're filming in 1080p here with both cameras. And now the GoPro Hero 4 Black's advantage with 4K and having that crisp and clarity isn't as much, but we can still tell there's a little more detail in those tires. Um, but things in the distance, such as the trees in the upper left, become fairly muddier compared to what we were seeing before on the ridge line. Uh, it's much more in line now with what the Sony's filming on the AZ-1 on the right side and stuff like that. So as we zoom out here, we'll take a look at the field of view of each of these cameras real quick. Now with the Sony camera, we have a wide field of view that's slightly wider by default than the Hero 4 Black. Now the Hero 4 Black does have the option to switch over to Super View mode, which will actually increase our field of view on both the top and the sides by utilizing the entire sensor and then kind of squishing that down into a 16 by 9 image. Now this adds a little bit of distortion, you'll see as we pop back to this, the wheel is uh, basically a complete circle and the cars that drive by aren't uh, as squished, but you'll see as we switch back here to Super View, uh, the wheel is kind of squished in, that, that minivan is kind of squished in, 
and that's kind of one of the downsides of filming in this mode, but if you're in a very tight environment, it's a huge advantage. The Sony HDR AZ-1 has a wide default field of view, but what this does is it adds a lot of distortion on the left and right side of your frame. So while the GoPro Hero 4 Black has three different field of view options that you can choose from, Sony only has one and it's restricted to when you're filming in steady shot mode. Now what it's going to do though is it's going to take this extra field of view information that's off screen and it's going to use its built in sort of accelerometer software to basically stable your footage as you're slightly shaking and running and stuff with the camera. It won't really help with high frequency shakes like if you're filming on like a helicopter or a mountain bike, but when you're doing these sort of dolly movements like we are here, it's going to make the image much more steady and much more uh, pleasant to watch later on. However, if you're doing these sort of bigger motions, you'll notice the camera will quickly uh, shift left or shift right as it tries to sort of find a new center point. But again, when you're just sort of walking or you're lightly jogging or if the camera is mounted somewhere on your body, if you're, let's say, mountain biking, it's going to be a much smoother, much more enjoyable picture to watch and you don't have to stabilize it when you get home. It's already all done. However, there is going to be a little bit of distortion in the upper left and right at points you're going to see. But if your main focus is on the center frame, it's not really that jarring. But if you know to look for it, it can be slightly off-putting, and that's kind of why I bring it up. Uh, the Hero 4 Black doesn't have any sort of stabilization options, not even in the GoPro Studio software. So when we're doing these sort of nice spin-arounds here with my, my girlfriend Amanda, who helped me out, um, it's just, it's a nice, smooth image. It's nice to sort of look back on and stuff like that. And we don't really have to do any work when we get home to make some of these shots look good. I don't think it's the way you should film all day, but it's definitely a nice option to have. So ever since the GoPro Hero 3 came out, uh, they introduced a new flat lens design and it's made filming underwater really easy right out of the box. Uh, you can see right off the bat the GoPro Hero 4 even at 4K, even if it's at 1080p, is going to look super crisp underwater thanks to that flat lens. The AZ-1, however, does not have a flat lens, and it's again using that sort of bubble lens in the front, which is a huge disadvantage to filming underwater. Uh, right at the, like when we're zoomed in here at 100%, you can just see I look super blurry. I have no details whatsoever. I can pull that camera out above the water, and it's going to look fine. As soon as we go underwater, it's going to look bad. Even at 1080p, uh, the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition still looks great, and its only issues is the color, really, which can be uh, fixed with a third-party sort of filter afterwards. And the AZ-1 actually has an underwater scene mode, which actually pumps a little more red into the image by default to sort of balance out your colors here. But without a flat lens, uh, the, our results are kind of useless which is kind of unfortunate. Now, there was a flat lens for the AS100, but at the time of filming this with the new case, there is no flat lens for the AZ-1, um, which which really sucks because it, it is look it looks like it would be a good camera for underwater. So you can see here, everything's nice and crisp on the AZ-1, and as soon as I go underwater in this blue water, um, images look great, but I'm all blurry. And this water is freezing because it is November when I filmed this, and this pool is not heated. So we'll just sort of make this full screen to kind of sell it off at the end. Uh, the AZ-1 has the potential to be a really good underwater camera once they come out with a flat lens camera. The Hero 4 Black, right out of the box, looks great underwater. It's sharp. Sure, we can throw in a filter there to make it better, but the results aren't bad. Now, we're filming here with the AS-100. It's not part of this test, but I do have the flat lens. Uh, the results between these two cameras are very similar. So if there is a flat lens in the future and you want to pay the extra 50 bucks to get it, these are the results you can expect uh, with the AZ-1. And again here we're going to be just filming with the GoPro Hero 4 Black. You can see how it's uh, much more teal and I'm going to swim by and maybe it'll affect the colors a little bit, which is kind of weird. But um, yeah, it's fine. It's just doing its thing, trying to keep the image balanced and the water was more blue. One of the really cool things about the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition, and arguably one of the main selling points, is its really powerful processor. Now what our powerful processor will allow us to do is it'll allow us to film at higher frames per second at higher resolutions. So something like 1080p, we can actually achieve 120 frames a second, uh, as opposed to Sony at 1080p, the most it can get is 60 frames per second. Now uh, the Sony is capable at filming at 120 frames per second, but it's going to be at a lower resolution at 720p. 
Um, the one downside with the Hero 4 Black at 720p is it also films at 120 frames per second. Originally people were expecting it to be able to film up to 240 frames a second at 720p. However, GoPro has stated that the image sensor cannot handle this. So here's sort of a representation of what 120 frames a second will look like on each camera before you scale it up to fit the frame. Now the GoPro Hero 4 Black actually is capable at taking higher resolutions to higher frame rates, which is really cool. Like I like to film at 1440p and I can actually go up to 80 frames a second if I want. And if I film at 2.7K, I can do 60 frames a second. Um, that's one of the main selling points with the Hero 4 Black is that processor. You just have a lot of options, especially when it comes to resolution and frames per second. The Sony, however, is only restricted to 720p at 120 frames a second, 1080p at 60 frames a second, and then 30 frames a second at both of those resolutions. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited to present this next section for you. I'm gonna basically keep to myself and let my buddy Gavork take over, and he's gonna play a few songs for you on an acoustic guitar. Sounds great, and again, I'm just gonna keep quiet and let the results speak for themselves. I actually think they speak for themselves quite well, so let's get to it. Now this next section is meant to go over sort of the contrast levels of both cameras. I'll basically just sum it up into both cameras handle going into light and dark just fine. And I just wanted to quickly talk about the audio section just a little bit while we're doing this. But um, the GoPro Hero 4 Black kind of surprised me because it seems like it's filming uh, mono again. I thought it was actually stereo this time around because they kind of advertised their higher end audio section. I couldn't show you the audio waveforms, but they were locked on with one another on the Hero 4 Black. While the Sony, um, the microphone that was closer to the camera definitely had a higher level spike than the one that was uh, slightly further away. Um, I didn't do anything to the sound of the Hero 4 Black. Uh, both of them were at the same negative three, otherwise they would just sort of be blaring out to you guys. But yeah, it was kind of a surprising result. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into the start of our low light um, comparison. Now, both of these cameras right here are filming at 1080p, 30 frames a second, and we're gonna keep it at 30 frames per second for the duration of low light and night test because it's gonna give our cameras uh, the most time in order to absorb light and make a more appealing image. Now, if you were to switch this to 60 frames per second, it's gonna make your image a lot darker because you're basically reducing the amount of light the tiny image sensor can collect by half. You don't wanna do that when you're filming at night, otherwise you're gonna get very grainy results and you're obviously gonna get very dark footage. And you're gonna come home and see that and be really upset. So, really suggest filming at 30 frames per second at night. 
The one rule I kind of have with uh, helmet cameras is if there's sunlight in the sky, chances are you can still get a very decent image. Uh, however, when that sun sets and you're basically running off artificial light, uh, these tiny sensors do not handle those conditions very well. So if it's around 4 o'clock and you're on the mountain and the sun is just starting to set over the mountain, you basically have about a half an hour to 45 minutes of really good footage time. Now, that's not necessarily 100% true. Yes, you can film at night and if you have sort of nice bright fluorescent lights and stuff like that you're gonna get good results. But if all of those conditions start to disappear uh, you start to see some weird results such as here with the Hero 4 Black. Now we're filming at 4K and I basically keep running into this major grain issue with the Hero 4 Black and especially as we get into nighttime conditions this uh, heavy grain turns into what I like to refer to as a snow grain. Now the awesome thing about the Sony HDR AZ-1 series is its backlit uh, illuminated sensor. It handles low light conditions extremely well uh, without flooding the camera with a ton of grain like the Hero 4 Black. The weird thing with the Hero 4 Black though, and I, I don't think it's an issue with just my one camera because I've seen it on a few, is this heavy grain turns into this weird, what I like to call like a snow grain. It seems like a repeating pattern. Now what the Hero 4 Black is trying to do is it's trying to compensate the low light by pumping in a bunch of grain. That way we can actually see detail in our image. And I thought by turning off the Protune setting that it would kick on the auto uh, degrainer. Now, Protune will actually disable the degrain to allow you to take care of that yourself later in case you want to keep some of that sharpness. Um, I was actually expecting fully that a lot of this grain would have disappeared and the results would have looked like the AZ-1. However, as you can see, I still have a very grainy image. Now, if we turn it onto our flat color mode, it's going to introduce this sort of green tint to our footage, which we don't really want, and it doesn't really give us uh, a better image. So, I have found that filming it um, with the GoPro Hero 4 Black, that you're going to want to film in the GoPro color mode and maybe adjust your ISO instead. Now, what the ISO is doing is it's actually controlling that grain level. So, we actually told it to go from 64,000, I'm sorry, 6400 to 1600. Now what that's going to do is it's going to make our image a little darker, but we're heavily reducing that grain amount. And we can actually take that all the way down to 400, but our image is going to get so dark to the point that it's near impossible to see. But this might be closer to the results you want because, again, we can sort of come back later and maybe bump up the footage. But it's nowhere as good as the HDR AZ-1 has been filming in just its default color mode. Now, I've chose neutral because it is slightly brighter. It does wash out those areas a little bit. And um, with the vivid color mode, it just crunches it just a little too much for me. However, when we're taking photos in low light, the Hero 4 Black has a lot more options for this. We have a lot more control over the exposure, the ISO. We can do 2 seconds, 5 seconds, auto, uh, even 10 to 30 seconds here. So you can see with the Hero 4 Black at 10 seconds, it's a super bright image. Uh, the Sony just doesn't have any of these options. And that doesn't mean we have a necessarily bad camera with the Sony HDR AZ-1. Uh, however, I just found the results to be a little less muddy, a little more smudgy. But you can see when we blow these two images side by side, they're not too far apart considering the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition is twice the price of the Sony AZ-R HD-1. So if your main concern is photo quality at the end of the day, they're not that far off, but the GoPro Hero 4 Black still retains a lot of that sort of sharpness and clarity that just isn't there in the AZ-1. Anyway guys, if you made it this far into the video and I've helped you a bit, press that like, subscribe, or share button. Uh, if I've helped you out a lot, you can consider dropping me a donation or a tip to help me buy more cameras to cover. And speaking of coverage, this isn't the only camera coverage or even accessory coverage we're doing this holiday season. There is a bunch there in these links on the left side here. And if you guys need additional information such as firmware, maybe links, high res links to these photos, check it out in the information section below. And if you don't see it there, feel free to leave me a question in the comments. Uh, that's probably the fastest way I'll get back to you. Or you can shoot me an email at markwalkcam at gmail.com. Anyway guys, thanks again for the support and I'll see you out there.